Let's bring in ano, uh, John Jose. He's the founder of American Tomorrow Project and former Republican, uh, well, RNC National Asian Engagement Director. We oh. had him uh, as a guest uh, for our special on One News during the last presidential debate between Biden and mm. Trump. John, let's bring you in. John, uh, can you hear us? Yes po, magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Magandang Good tanghali. morning. Hi John. So, Hi John. Ang balita kami sa inyo diyan sa US eh siguro na imagine lang namin nagra-rumble siguro yung mga mga mga, mga isip <laughs> ng <nyo>, ko. <laughs> ano ba diyan ang ibig sabihin ng uh, ng uh, Asian Engagement Director? Yes po. So um, I had the uh, the privilege uh, last uh, from 2021 to 2020 beginning of 2024 to be the Republican National Asian Engagement Director po. So my job was to go around the country uh, ba- uh, from swing, gr- swing districts to battleground states, uh, talk to Asian communities from Vietnamese, Koreans, uh, Chinese, Filipinos, Hmongs, um, Indian Americans. So we, we are trying to build that coalition for the Republican Party. So we had that uh, opportunity and, and the privilege to be the first Filipino American to be in that role po within the Republican Party. Are you in Milwaukee right now, where where they're having the national convention for the Republicans? Yes, po. Yes, po. We we got to arrive yesterday, um, and so it's been uh, quite the journey, you know, for the past couple of days within the the Republican world and um, in the U.S. politics as well. Mm. Um, but looking forward to a great week here in Milwaukee. Um, I think that uh, the Republicans now are a lot more united. Uh, first time to be honest with you since 2016 probably uh, because you know in 2020 the, the convention was because of during COVID so it wasn't held in person but then 2016 was President Trump's first um, convention where he was beca- where he became the nominee yeah. for the Republican Party yeah. so now it's more united and it's a little bit more different scenery than what it previously was when you say more united meaning, is that meaning John, of what, what we're pandemic. saying is well it's the question on everyone's mind no Uh, it looks like Trump has become a stronger con- candidate. No, sure, na sure, na siya, no, of the nomination because of what happened. Is that the mood in the, Rep- in the Republican convention? Yeah, I think you know within the Republican Party, of course, the mood has, has switched. I mean, you know, from the past few weeks since the the debate. And, I mean, previously to that, it's been yes. uh, the momentum has been going. But you know, as you can see, the Democrats have been just in total disarray. Since the debate, they mm. can't figure out if si Biden is really going to be a candidate or not. Um, but mm. it's you know, confusing a lot of the voters' minds. And then obviously what happened yesterday and the conversations I've had with Filipinos across the country, uh, folks from even different parties you know, are reaching out to me and saying, man, this is a, a crazy thing to see in the United States. This is something that you'll you never see. And um, you know, so I think that the mood in the Republican Party is... We, we, we have to bring this fight now to the ballot boxes. Uh, we have to win. I think this really encourages and brings strong enthusiasm to the party for folks to really turn out. Um, I think that's the a little bit of the recipe that we've been missing in the previous elections is we, we're so focused on the issues, focused on what's happening in the country, but we have to really follow through at the ballot box. And so that's where the Dems have beaten us. And I think this time around, the Republicans are strong in all facets in fundraising and candidates in the way that they're going to approach this election. And we just have to turn out and, you know, we can't be too comfortable just yet until we, you know, we have Donald Trump become inaugurated as the next president. Uh, on the assassination attempt itself, ano ang inyong mga initial na na findings or mga investigation as uh, as Republicans? Of course, hindi niyo well, naman niya yan, no? pero syempre, may initial na pagtingin kayo on what happened. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think that obviously we leave the official investigations to the authorities. I know the Secret Service is opening up their own internal investigation. FBI is doing the same thing. Uh, local police and the state's doing it. And then, of course, uh, Congress is is um, going to hear about this as well. If, you know, they were focusing and they were I know they were having conversations of if there was a J6 in the investigation, there's got to be a July 13th investigation about this as well. Um, and, you know, and. On a personal note, I think that the Secret Service does a complete fine job and put their lives in, in this. You know, as as what 
the situation might be into the viewers into the perspectives of people let's just remember that you know a person died in this right and so this is a real real life thing that really affected people in this area um but on the other hand you know i think that in terms of there's a lot of questions you know this is a failure in a bit to the secret services eyes they haven't had an attack like this since president reagan right and so any kind of small mishaps or something like this is already a failure in their eyes and that's how they should look at it because this is a presidential candidate former president that was hit and by the grace of god if he was tw switched on a different head or looked in a different way we might be mourning him today and looking for a replacement now so that's how big this this moment is right it's a matter of millimeters and so um you know it's it's a real threatening situation and i think that you know really gave the president now a better perspective and you know the reports are seeing that coming to milwaukee he's going to unite the country a lot more in his messaging in how they're going to tone down the rhetoric for this so i think it's going to be an interesting next few days paul well you're talking about the... john you were talking about the issues you know uh, this is gun violence political violence everyone is condemning political violence won't this work against the republicans don't you think i'm sorry can you repeat that last part paul it's, it's gun violence, eh? because you were talking about issues, and this is gun violence. Everyone is condemning political violence, armed violence. Won't this work against uh, the Republicans? What do you I think? think? so, Paul, because, you know, at the end of the day, you can say it's gun violence or it's not. It's still, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of folks in, this, in the Republican Party still believe in their Second Amendment rights. Um, but let's hmm. talk about like the mental health of this person, right? Uh, obviously, as the reports have come out, and we we don't want to say anything to glorify what he's done, hmm. but this guy was a deranged man who wanted violence and decided to choose violence. Now, we don't know, you know, how he consumed his media or how he consumed any of this, you know, like appetite for him to create this type of violence. But, you know. I, it shouldn't go back to any type of issue. It's got to come back to this man that's just being deranged. And, you know, he had some previous training to it based on a hobby, right? So how can you find ways to just say, oh, this guy's completely nut job, but he's, this is his hobby. This is something that he spends his time on. And obviously people saw him do that. And, you know, he, he just ended up using this violence and, and into the worst of things. John, there's still four months to go before the U.S. elections, or almost four months. Uh, uh, how big an impact do you think this will have on the results of the elections? Well, if I would want to look at, you know, I thought 2020 was the craziest election that I've seen, you know, with COVID and, you know, <laughs> the, the race between Biden and President Trump back then. But now, I mean, this is even crazier than ever, right? Who knows what next week's going to bring after the past three weeks have already been super crazy. Um, but I think in terms of our eyes, you know, in the Republicans' mindsets, we're, we're clear with our nominee. It's going to be President Donald J. Trump going for this, and we're excited to see who his uh, vice president pick is going to be. Uh, we're looking forward to bringing, you know, the candidacy between President Trump and whoever the vi vice president candidate is to the country and to earn the votes of millions of Americans for this upcoming election. While, on the other hand, the Democrats are going to have to, you know, figure out, is this really the path that they're going to do? Are they going to end up having an open convention and trying to choose a different candidate besides President Biden? So I think it's a lot more on their hands and the issues because, you know, their everyday voters are losing uh, momentum with them. They're they're seeing them as, you know, like, yeah, you're, pro you're projecting all of these successes within your administration. But the reality of life is people are working extra hard right working extra hours saving less money and you know to our filipino american community here in the united states they're ending up sending less money back home right and working more shifts trying to save and, and you know this is the same problem the philippines seeing is the increased inflation in everyday goods and so these are still like on the minds and the forefront of the minds of the american filipino american people and americans across this country as well moving forward john no uh, almost probable na na si Trump will be elected sa Republican National Convention. And now, he's uh, pulling away from Biden in all surveys. Wala, walang survey na pinapakita na uh, magkadikit sila. No? Uh, ano yung magiging uh, foreign policy kanya, kaya niya in relation dito sa ating uh, region, sa Asia Pacific, dito sa South China Sea? Because some may be worrying na, uh, will that change? Yung, uh, halimbawa, yung... Uh, 
strategic ambiguity ng US for decades na nagbago this past few years na sabi ni Biden they will defend Taiwan militarily I will this change uh, with the Trump presidency looking uh, moving forward No you know from um, what he did in 2016 and to and to, to 2020 in his first administration uh, despite you know what he might have been strong on on terms of foreign policy I from my recollection and, and talk, talking with his previous staff that was focused on the Philippine matters in Asia he was always prepared to stand by the ironclad agreement that the United States has with the Philippines and you know I think that goes back because that's a a long term foreign policy of the United States itself and so for my conversations with previous staff this is something that he's really pushing and and really looking strong forward to right and so um we're looking forward when he come becomes president as well to add on to those uh objectives that president Biden right now has done for for the Philippines and the safety personally i think you know both um candidates and you know president Biden former president Trump are doing a good job when it comes to really supporting the Philippines when it comes to this matter and personally this is a very very important issue to me and i know to a lot of filipino americans here as well Mm -hmm. well, uh, John, are you tracking Filipino American and Asian American voter preferences? Can we get the impression that uh, a lot of Filipinos are actually pro Trump? Is that correct? I, I would like to think so, ma'am. Um, you know, from my conversations, like I said, within a lot of the communities, a lot of the issues are important on both sides, right? We have I think now a little bit more of a generational divide of like the Filipino immigrant Filipino American immigrants like myself or first uh generation immigrants who came yeah. from the Philippines moved here and now there's a trend now of more Filipino Americans being born in the United States than immigrating here. Mm -hmm. So it's a two different cultural divide of like understanding where you came from and what it is now, but these issues are very important to the mm -hmm. Filipino American community. Um I think that I do want to see a lot more Filipino Americans turn out and, and vote. Candidates are all across the country now are really courting the Filipino American vote and we have to take advantage of it as Filipino Americans to to really be the difference and the margin of victory for a lot of these candidates and I do believe that there are a lot more Filipino Americans that are um the in the silent majority when it comes to supporting the Republican Party. They might not voice it out as publicly in 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 fear of retaliation or being, you know, called out as being a Republican, um but I think when they're seeing the realities of the situations in in the in the in what's happening in the Philippines in here, they're really seeing that we we've, we've got to change, you know. We this is the first time you can see both presidents that will have both records from 2016 to 2020, from 2020 2024 that you really can stand by on which had a good success on good run on both political and socio social issues and economical issues as well. Uh, John, in relation sa tanong ni Ami, being sabi mo nga kanina, you're the first Filipino American sa position na 'yan sa uh, Republican Opa. National Congress, no? Na coordinating with the uh, Asians for the Republican yes. Party. Uh, gusto kong tanungin ay ano yung inyong karanasan dahil alam mo naman na yung Republicans are very strong against illegal uh, immigration, di ba? And uh, maraming mga Asians, even Filipinos, ay pumasok sa US as illegal migrants. So, how do you balance that? Yung uh, ating history, yung reality. TNT. Na oh, na maraming TNT yes, na nandyan. And the threat na sila ay uh, ma-deport pabalik dito. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that comment very much so, both because that is a big conversation across the United States and within the Filipino American community, right? Um, I do believe that, you know, in terms of comparing the Filipinos and let's say Mexican Amer Mexicans that are South, South Americans that are crossing through that southern border is when Filipinos come to the United States, they still have to go through and and try to get that visa, right? They still get it. And then once they're here, they decide to stay and not come back and and be a TNT, right? Whereas if you are crossing from the southern border, you are just making a deliberate choice of not even trying to attempt to be somewhat legal, right? You're just saying we're just going to cross it. And so to a lot of the Filipino Americans here in this in this country, it's a literal slap to the face because tons of us remember the times, the amounts of money 
kung anong oras kayo gumising para pumunta, pumila sa U.S. Embassy and mm, to get all the medical yun. clearances <laughs> just so that you can have a better life. And then you come here and we understand within the Filipino community the hardships of the Filipino Americans that go through to make that decision. But I think Filipino Americans that do that or Filipinos that decides to be illegal is they're making that decision when they're already here. Right. They're making that deliberate decision that they're going to break the law, whereas the, the immigrants that are just going through and invading through the southern borders, they just don't care. They want to see. Yeah, they want to have a better future, but there's no part of vetting them. We have no idea what type of folks they are going to be, what what types of um, jobs or whatever they're going to do. Right. And that's got to have to be stopped because then they they're going to be taking out the benefits of the regular citizens. Right. We've got Filipino Americans that are in the southern part of the country, right, in Arizona and, and Nevada that are feeling some of this pain, right? You know, they're 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 chugging hard and working very hard. And then we got legal immigrants coming here and now they're taking away the benefits from those hardworking Filipinos too. Right. So it's it's a it's it's very controversial and it's a very hard topic to go through, but with empathy I think you can solve this. But then you also have to understand the rule of law, right? And we have to obey that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about among other Asians, John? Is there concern? Or are you aware of concern for Trump, a second Trump presidency? Um, of course, there's people that, you know, have, have been saying the concerns that they've gotten, and I understand it. But I think, you know, based on the records, uh, I think both President Trump and, and President Biden can have something to run on. But I believe, like, in terms of mm -hmm. economic prosperity and ways to develop their lives and to achieving that American dream, a lot of that success has happened a lot more during President Trump's term. Um, and you can see, you know, from the people were saving money, people can buy houses, right? Young people can do that. Nowadays, young people here, people like me is having a hard time finding, buying homes in the United States, right? Or like starting a family because of how just things cost so much more. And it's hard to think about your future when, you, when the econom economy is not doing too well. Um, under these uh, democratic policies. So we're looking forward to President Trump to reviving the economy again and um, making sure that we're, we're finding ways into achieving that American dream. Okay. Well, John, uh, Trump getting the Republican nomination is already, uh, I suppose, a foregone conclusion. But who's the strongest vice presidential candidate uh, for the Republicans? Taya po yan sa loto. <laughs> so we, we we don't really know on you know it's all depending on President Trump, and I think you know it's usually by this time you already have an idea of who it is. They've done enough vetting mm. to kind of you know kind of pad it out to kind of slow launch who the VP is. But this time he's really keeping it close to the chest. What I'm proud about it is we have such a strong bench and stable for the, the Republican Party that I'm looking forward to any of them. I think any of the shortlist folks can bring. Uh, tremendous support to the president, right? And it just depends on how the president wants to uh, run with this, right? Is he going to have somebody who's going to be the next face of the MAGA identity? Or is he going to have somebody that's going to be an ex former executive of a state that can be a president as soon as, you know, when knock on wood, something might happen? Or does he want a, a, a vice president candidate that might have a, a stronger foreign policy, right? So a lot of these folks are really capable. And I think there's even a few dark horses that that I'm kind of pulling for that's going to be an interesting choice. But I think that either way, the president is going to be rallying to, to pick this vice president and the Republican Party is going to rally behind them into making this a reality and getting them elected. Mm -hmm. On a personal note, John, how did you become uh, a Republican? Were your parents Republican? Uh, <laughs> mo ba yung ideology ng Republican Party? Uh, do you want a lesser um, you, government, lesser uh, uh, state intervention, more privatization, uh, lesser taxes? So, yung ba yung pinanggalingan mo, uh, ideology, uh, platform, or so I more from, personal? So, growing up in Manila po, ano po I, I grew up there and I, I from spent my summers in Batangas with my family. Um, so, uh, we come from a very religious and, and, and family-based family where, you know, the family is the center of our life. And so, um, when I immigrated in Kentucky, which is not a place where there's a lot of Filipinos, po, I can count on uh, two, fit, two hands how many Filipinos I encountered with in the first few years in Kentucky. Um, it's just 
more of that same lifestyle that we gotten to have in, 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 in the province, in the Philippines, right? The family is the base, religion is, is a part of your life. We believe more in, in, in the strong sense of individual freedom, right? And then also get the government is the problem and, and gets in the way. Um, you know, I kind of see that when we were living in the Philippines, right? Government is a part of everything uh, when there should be some privatization to, to, to foster some of that. And so we believe the same way here in, in, in the United States. And been, um, but I, you know, I wasn't, this is something like my parents never told me you should be a Republican. You know, they always told me, look at the current situations, open up your eyes, um, do your research, do your homework, really be observant of what's really happening. Right. And so um, that's how I became a Republican and um, been fortunate enough to be in this role and, you know, always carrying that Philippine flag with me wherever I go to. Mm -hmm. Well, John, with what happened over the weekend, uh, is, is there any concern uh, with the, actually with both Democrats and Republicans that you know um, things have gotten to a fever pitch uh, yep. state there in the U.S. Uh, everybody's so tense and with, with, the, with the violence over the weekend that uh, things could go easily downhill. Is there any concern of that? I oh definitely. I mean, you know, this has been brewing up since. Pre-COVID, you know, those elections since even the president's first term that he ran on. Um, I think, you know, President Biden came on TV uh, a few hours ago to talk about uh, from the Oval Office to discuss about bringing the temperature down. And I think, you know, that is appropriate coming from his position as president, uh, you know, and, and making sure as leader of the executive branch as well. You know, he's his his agencies are the one that's in charge of protecting, you know, the president. Um, the, the candidates as well and you know they need to, f to boost that up obviously president trump hasn't had as much uh secret service details since he was president and you know we also have a major presidential candidate of robert f kennedy that doesn't even have any secret service mm -hmm. detail um so those are things that need to be considered by the executive branch but in terms of lowering the fever or the the the, the, temperature. the temperature down it's definitely ideal to do that um and i think we're going to hear that from president trump when he addresses uh, the nation on Thursday when he accepts the nomination. Uh, from some reports I'm, I'm hearing and, and hearing from other folks, they're saying that he's kind of scrapped his original speech based off what happened yesterday or two days ago now and, and trying to revamp it into finding an opportunity now not only to unite the country but also unite the world uh, during these times. John, if I may, I'll just hit the pause button there for, for a short while uh, while we play uh I think a soundbite uh, from uh, Joe Biden uh, in his uh, with his Oval Office address. Let's, let's play the sound, sound, soundbite. Thankfully, former Trump is not seriously injured. I spoke with him last night. I'm grateful he's doing well. And Jill and I keep him and his family in our prayers. We also extend our deepest condolences to the family of the victims who was killed. Corey was a husband, a father, a volunteer firefighter, a hero sheltering his family from those bullets. We should all hold his family and all those injured in our prayers. A former president was shot, an American citizen killed, while simply exercising his freedom to support the candidate of his choosing. We cannot, we must not, go down this road in America. We've traveled before throughout our history. Violence has never been the answer. Whether it's with members of Congress of both parties being targeted and shot, or a violent mob attacking the Capitol on January 6th, or a brutal attack on the spouse of former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, or information and intimidation on election officials, or the kidnapping plot against the sitting governor, or an attempted assassination on Donald Trump. There is no place in America for this kind of violence, or for any violence ever, period. No exceptions. We can't allow this violence to be normalized. It's time to cool it down. We all have a responsibility to do that. Yes, we have deeply felt strong disagreements. The stakes in this election are enormously high. I've said it many times that the choice in this election we make in this election is going to shape the future of America and the world for decades to come. I believe that with all my soul. Okay, uh, uh, President Joe Biden. Uh, well, John, let me throw in one more question. Uh, what, what, what's your, what's the thinking of Republicans as far as uh, the performance of the Secret Service uh, over the weekend was? 
Uh, as I said initially, I think, you know, at first we're still very thankful for the jobs of what the Secret Service do, right? They they throw their bodies at it, bullets and, and trying to serve their protectees and, and the people around them. But we cannot um, move past the fact that they did have a lapse in this, right? And in terms of, um, I've, I've been to plenty of these rallies. I know how mm -hmm. like back-end security kind of stuff s sweeps happen, right? So I'm, I'm sure that this area was swept a lot earlier, but when it came to terms of um, having an infrastructure, I know that that barn, uh, that roof area was past a little bit past the security um, per perimeter and barricade earlier. So um, I know from within that square, it's pretty much protected. So there's going to have tons of investigations on this, and we're looking forward to getting to the bottom of it to see if there was any lapse within the top brass of the Secret Service. Um, you know, there's a report saying that the, the counter snipers were waiting from a for approvals from from their bosses, but there was counter reports saying that they don't need those types of um, commands, right? So there's, we've got to get to the bottom of this. There's definitely been a lapse, and we we've, we've got to talk about you know being part of the Secret Service. How are they really protecting the, their protectees and mm -hmm. their families? And especially like what you said, four months to go, things are going to boil over even more and closer we get to the election, um, and that's going to be an interesting play. So I think that. There's a lot of concerns within the Republican Party when it comes to safety of President Trump, for sure. Yeah, but John, John it's, it's a bit difficult to imagine how anybody can sneak an AR-15 style right. rifle around uh, on a rooftop uh, <laughs> when it can clearly be viewed by other people on other rooftops. <laughs> well, I think so it was so like with the roof being going like this, I think yeah. he was coming in from right here. On the opposite so side. the folks from the stage couldn't necessarily see it. But the people behind that roof mm -hmm. can really have a vantage point of it. And so we really have to get to the bottom of like, yeah, I understand that the cops try to come up there and, you know, were they not prepared to, to engage with this uh, deranged man? Um, but obviously it's definitely been premeditated because he, he understood where he was going to be to have that vantage point. So um, it's going to be interesting to see when they look at the cameras to see if this guy was there previously. Did he have some sort of... Um, relationship with the folks who are in that building that he knows somebody who let you know so those are some of the questions that need to be answered down the road pero di ba pero di ba John ay isang fundamental problem yan sa US ngayon how can a teenager na sabi mo nga deranged may mental problems own an AR15 na basically gamit sa gera di ba how can a society uh, have such rules na teenagers can own assault rifles which is basically used for war. And you know, I'm kinatanong ko, that's the issue being raised against the Republicans. Yan ang kinatanong ko, what will be the impact on the Republicans of this sentiment na, you know, a 20-year-old can have that kind of rifle and shoot a former president and presidential candidate? Yeah, and, and so, but, you know, like, in terms of the Republican ideology of it, like, being a Second Amendment right to uh, every American, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that you can't take away from people, right? And, but I think that there are um, uh, guardrails that we can Im implement in identifying these folks earlier, right? And, I mean, what, when he was, it was really, it's really hard to say, well, how can you own a gun when he, that was his hobby. It was part of almost like a shooting club, right? And or an, so, somewhat of an ROTC program, and so that would be hard to do. But the fact of the matter is, how do we control the like? How do we maintain his 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 personality when it comes to this? Are we picking up flags that this person is acting differently, or is he, you know, showing some sort of ways to to you know to see that and the folks that have been interviewed say yeah this kid was bullied this kid was you know really outcasted right so then they this world needs a little bit more compassion to these folks these are folks that are you know they feel like they're unheard you know there's so many things that's going in their minds and they think that they can be the solution to the problem when um the idea is like look if it's a criminal they're going to find a way to do it one way or the other either it's guns it's it's weapons that they're going to cause to create violence, right? And so then they, we have to focus on the mental health aspect of it and finding ways to identify these types of folks who, who do own weapons and finding ways to take those weapons away from them when they are in, in mo those mo John, uh, John, nabanggit mo na sa parating na Republican National Convention ay balak itone down yung rhetoric. Does that mean na ito tone down ni uh, uh, 
President, uh, ex-President Trump, yung kanyang uh, political narrative that the 2020 election was stolen, which was the basis for the attack on the Capitol on January 6. Ito tone down ba niyan? Will he backpedal? So I think that... So I think when it comes to that, like he's always been straightforward when it comes to that, and yeah, he's taught, said about losing and or not losing, and and his in his situation of that. Obviously, we've moved past it. Obviously, he can't be considered a dictator because he did leave his post on January twentieth uh, to make way and transition for President Biden. President Biden is the current president, so I think it's a great narrative for him to do this in, in terms of getting making sure that the base really turns out and really turn and, and vote early. You know, the biggest difference now, um, and I think that's why it, it, he's, I don't think he'll t tone that rhetoric down because he wants to make sure that the ballot boxes are going to be safe. Voters are going to feel safe when they vote. Um, and, you know, the, the term, and it's a different get out the vote season now here in the United States. It's not like you vote one day and then you find out, you know, you'll find out the results after. Now, a voting season can be depending on the state, can be four weeks before prior to an election when they send out those mail ballots, right? So when, when it comes to that, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered from different state uh, parties and st or state um, secretaries of states and how they process their elections, right? Sometimes you don't even request for a mail ballot. They automatically send it to you. So how do you track the, the life cycle of a ballot? So these are a lot of concerns that's important to voters. Uh, especially in the Republican Party, to make sure that their vote actually counts in some of these places that are Democrat uh, strongholds for a long, a long time, right? So it's all different per state and per county on how they turn out these voting processes. So I think that in terms of rhetoric, I think we have to encourage folks to really turn out and vote, vote early. Um, especially for our Filipino American communities that might be working during election day. Now is the time to really get be a part of this election process. Okay. Uh, ano bok? May pera ba? Uh, maraming salamat, uh, John P.B. Jose, founder of American Tomorrow Project and former RNC National Engagement Director. John, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon and thank you for your insights. Salamat, John. Maraming thank you, John. Uh, Batanggen yun, ha? <laughs> Alay. Alay. Thank you. <laughs> salamat. Ingat po, pa. Magkapit tayo. Sige, <laughs> ha?